Hey, yo, and what's up, gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV tonight. I could play with fucking puppets, too. I had a puppet long before Bray Wyatt decided to start bringing puppets to the dance. The 2019 Superstar Shake-Up is over. And just like the Royal Rumble, just like the Raw and SmackDown after WrestleMania, just like all of the things about the WWE and professional wrestling that we as fans hold dear, the Superstar Shake-Up has become another just useless, pointless device that the WWE wants to throw in front of us to garner our interest and then deliver us essentially nothing. But thankfully, most usually as is the case with SmackDown Live, it wasn't all that bad tonight and we are here to talk about it right here and right now. My name is Nick Nightmare and you are watching the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's SmackDown Live review. Let's do it. Alright wrestling fans, thank you so much for joining me. I have not even recovered from last night's abomination of a show. And tonight, Vince McMahon does the most Vince McMahon thing that he could possibly do by trolling the crowd, giving us the most epic, the biggest, the most colossal addition ever to SmackDown Live! And it ends up being Roman Reigns. From this moment on, SmackDown Live has been repackaged as the Roman Reigns experience, ladies and gentlemen. And it is now a reality. Not only am I going to have to sit through three hours on a fucking Monday night and just get absolutely tortured by the horrible, horribleness of a Monday Night Raw. Now I'm going to have to sit on SmackDown Live, which will eventually be Friday, but it is Tuesday right now, and get nothing but Roman Reigns shoved down my throat. And that's not something I don't think anybody wants, except maybe Roman's wife, but that's a little story for him and his wife to have on another day. I don't want to be subjected to all of this Roman Reigns on a night that is usually Roman Reigns free. I know some of you guys are going to be like, oh, well, it's a welcome change. It, it's not a welcome change because I am not a Roman Reigns fan. I do not look at Roman Reigns with doe eyes like Vince McMahon. I'm not sitting here in the studio beating off to pictures of the big sexy Samoan that Vince McMahon likes to throw on all of his programming. The way he... Just all the hyperbole, the greatest acquisition in the history of all of SmackDown Live. What was the last biggest acquisition of SmackDown Live? I don't even remember. Could it have possibly been AJ Styles? You're telling me Roman Reigns is going to be a bigger acquisition than a guy like AJ Styles who carried SmackDown Live on his back? And while we're on that topic, whose house is SmackDown Live now? SmackDown Live's no longer a house. It's now a fucking yard. And it's the yard of the big dog. And between Roman Reigns and Charlotte Flair being shoved down our throats and up our you-know-whats, I don't think there's going to be any room for anybody else on SmackDown Live if Vince McMahon has his way with things. And we all know that that is eventually what happens no matter what. But like we said, some of you guys might be hot. You know, you might be hot in a good way. You might be all excited. Oh, thank God Roman's not on Raw. Maybe Raw won't be so bad. Raw will always be bad. Raw will always be bad until Vince McMahon is no longer part of the company. It's, it's an unfortunate thing that I have to say, but it is becoming more and more evident with each and every episode that the man that is running this show is getting further and further out of touch with each week that passes. I don't understand why he still believes that Roman Reigns is the future of this company. Why he's so intent 
on having Charlotte Flair most likely be the number one female athlete that has ever graced the WWE wrestling ring. Why are the people that he chooses, the people that he chooses, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. And I don't want to sit here for the first 10 minutes of the opening of the show just bashing on the way the show ended, which just made me crack up. I was laughing my ass off because I see everybody on social media. Oh, I, I wonder who, who is it going to be? Is it going to be Brock Lesnar? Is it going to be this one or that one? No, man. This has been the most predictable maneuver that anybody could have seen coming from a mile away. It has not been a secret that Vince has wanted Roman Reigns to swap places with AJ Styles. And now we're going to have this different dynamic? Well, what's going to be so different? It's going to be fucking Roman Reigns in blue. It's going to be Raw in blue. And I, I'm not really going to be too happy about it. As a person that is not a fan of the character of Roman Reigns on WWE television, this is not something that was earth-shattering and epic, and it didn't tip the scales in favor of SmackDown Live. If anything, to me, it made it worse. And if you take the good show that you have, and you make it worse, now I'm going to have two terrible nights of wrestling. Because if you think for one minute that they're not going to fill all two hours of SmackDown Live with Roman Reigns, you're out of your mind. Look at what they do to us on a Monday with Roman over the last six years or whatever he's been around. You couldn't get it done on Monday Night Raw on the flagship show. You couldn't get this man over for four plus years. Four WrestleMania main events. Three different coronations. Nobody still cares. And if you listen close enough, there was enough resist. There was a resistance from the Montreal crowd. You heard the boos. I heard the boos. Nobody was really that excited. I don't know what the hell you guys thought was going to happen. But it wasn't going to be anything more than what we got. And if you didn't see that coming, then you need to get your prescriptions checked because your eyes might be failing you. Come on, you guys. This is not a big deal like the WWE wants you to believe it is. This is just more WWE agenda-driven bullshit. Now we are going to have him on a roster of talented individuals that he's just going to burn through on his path to the championship. Guys like Kofi Kingston, guys like Daniel Bryan, Shinsuke Nakamura, Rusev, all of these guys are going to be feeling the wrath of Roman once again. And it's nothing that I want to be involved with. <clears throat> there was no Daniel Bryan on the show tonight. Apparently, he does not give a shit about anything to do with the Superstar Shake-Up. Can you blame him? Because at the end of the day, nothing's going to change. And what, are we going to get a babyface Roman versus the planet's champion, Daniel Bryan? I'm not interested in any furthering of the push of Roman Reigns. And we all know it's coming, and we better brace for it. And it's going to suck. Just like most of tonight's episode for the Superstar Shake-Up edition of SmackDown Live. Not the best show in the world. And we're going to shift gears right now and jump off of the one ramming device that is Roman Reigns, and we're going to move to the Charlotte Flair experience. Why was this match on this show? Why was it necessary to see Charlotte Flair versus Carmella during the Superstar Shake-Up? I don't understand what the need for this match was. It was not a bad match, as you might expect by me telling you Carmella was part of it. It was a decent match between the two girls, but why was this match booked? This was just a lead-in to the segment for Lars Attacks. Lars Attacks, the sequel to Mars Attacks, only it's 20 years too late, and it's a gigantic fucking man who looks disgusting and is maybe too little too late. With Lars, I don't feel anything for him. I was actually excited for him coming to the main roster, but he's been gone for so long, and they're just using him in this very typical Braun Strowman role. And from what we've seen from him tonight, after he attacked our truth, fixing his gaze upon Carmella, are we going to see another fucking Gene Snitsky? Is he going to be obsessed with Carmella? Is he going to have a foot fetish? Is he going to like her big googly eyes? Does he want some of her money? Is he going to be infatuated with Carmelo? Are we going to go down this Georgie Animal Steel type road with Lars and Carmella? With R Truth being the man to champion her cause, her prince? Get that shit right out of here. And why, if he was going to SmackDown Live, was he on Monday Night Raw last night to 
demolish Rey Mysterio. There was just no fucking reason to it. And you got people go, oh, I, I like what they're doing with Lars. He's, he's a legend killer. He's going through all the legends. And blah. Our truth is a legend? Carmella's a legend? If that was where they were going with it, they definitely shifted gears quickly in the last 24 hours on the character direction of Lars Sullivan, and I'm, t- I'm not feeling it either way. I'm already done with it. Maybe it's Braun Strowman's fault. Maybe I don't give a shit about Braun Strowman, so anybody that's smaller than him, like, I, I don't care. He's supposed to be the big guy roaming around. Lars Sullivan's supposed to make me feel something? And you move Lars Sullivan to SmackDown Live, so now Braun Strowman is stuck on Monday Night Raw. If anybody needed to move to SmackDown Live, it wasn't fucking Roman Reigns, it was Braun Strowman. If anybody needs a clean reset, the monster among men is the prime candidate. But he's going to stick around on Raw, dumping around fucking, you know, garbage pails and pulling down sets and beating up EC3 and burying people that don't need to be buried for Vince McMahon. But let's look at the people that we got on SmackDown Live tonight, because like I said, it wasn't all that bad. I went off on a little bit of bad tangent, Roman Reigns and that topic absolutely does that to me for the most part. But SmackDown Live did get a couple of decent acquisitions, namely in the form of Finn Balor. The Intercontinental Championship is back on SmackDown Live, and that I think is great. The Intercontinental Championship title was featured in a more prominent role on SmackDown Live. The Miz actually was the man to bring it back to some sort of a prominence in his run on SmackDown Live since the initial brand split in the beginning. And I I think that the Intercontinental Championship and Finn Balor definitely fit very well with the roster of talent that we have on SmackDown Live. I could run down the same list that I talked to you that's going to get buried by Roman Reigns. We're going to get potential dream matches with a Finn Balor versus a Kofi Kingston. Finn Balor and Daniel Bryan. Finn Balor and Rusev would be fucking great. Finn versus Shinsuke is a no-brainer, but the WWE don't do those kind of things. They're just going to probably kill him, for all we know. But Finn Balor and the Intercontinental Championship back on, on, on SmackDown Live, and Buddy Murphy from 205 Live, the longest reigning Cruiserweight Champion to date, the guy that's had the best run, if you ask me, He's definitely proven his worth, and he has earned a spot on SmackDown Live. And if you want to give me Finn Balor versus Buddy Murphy for the Intercontinental Championship at SummerSlam, start leading it up right now, I am on board. Take my money right now. That is going to be a matchup to not be believed. I mean, we also know that the WWE likes to handcuff these talents because, God forbid, they look better than the big dog or anybody else that night, but you know the capabilities of these two guys, and when they get in the ring with one another, it's going to be wrestling magic no matter what the WWE tries to handcuff them with, and I can't wait to see that particular pairing happen on SmackDown Live. As far as the women go, we had Ember Moon jumping ship from Monday Night Raw. That's not a bad move at all. Ember Moon was literally dead. She was stuck under the weight of the Samoan sandwich team. And everybody else on Monday Night Raw, the Boston (laughs) Connection, which thank thank God is finally dead. Because we got Bailey on SmackDown Live announcing that she's going to be a singles competitor once again. Paying tribute to her fallen brother, Sasha Banks, or sister, rather, I'm sorry. And, <laughs> and, and I'm still baffled by the whole situation. You got Sasha Banks threatening to jump ship. We had Luke Harper leave the WWE today. Rumors are running rampant that Alexander Wolf of Sanity, since, he, since Nikki Cross isn't a part of it anymore, and Eric Young was taken to Monday Night Raw, Alexander Wolf is like, I'll see you guys later, apparently. And there's a little bit of a dispar- uh, not, a, not a disparagement, a discrepancy as to what the true meaning of his cryptic tweets were, as if he is he actually saying goodbye to the WWE altogether, or is he just saying goodbye to sanity? It's still, at this moment, is pretty much unclear, but with everybody jumping ship, I mean, even these minor talents, they might not move the needle anywhere else, they might not mean anything, but the WWE is the dream! How do you walk away from the WWE? If you're a little kid and you grew up your whole life wanting to wrestle for the WWE, you wanted to be the tag team champions with somebody, you wanted to hold that Intercontinental Championship. If you're a woman, you wanted to be the f- the woman's champion. Now you're just walking away. Is it that easy? When you're being treated like a Sasha Banks and a Luke Harper, I don't see how it could definitely be 
that hard. Alexander Wolf probably won't be missed. It's not a terrible loss. But it probably is to him, and I feel for him. And I feel for the fans of Sanity like myself. We had the makings of a great faction, and they came up to the main roster and just were not used. Just fizzled out dead completely. And now we got people walking away. And can you fucking blame them? Especially when you got guys like Elias coming to SmackDown Live for what? To sing songs to us on on Tuesday instead of Monday? I understand there are different faces. You Oh, there's different people from the wrestle. Elias doesn't wrestle. Elias didn't wrestle half the Raw roster. He didn't have to move. It's not his fault that WWE just stuck him with boring Trashley all the time. Terrible. I don't understand the point. And let me just zoom in on this little tidbit for you. If you realize that the main event of SmackDown Live, or the main event segment of SmackDown Live featured Vince McMahon, Elias, and Roman Reigns. Three of the worst things in wrestling right now. And I'm supposed to get excited for the future of SmackDown Live? You want to tell me this is going to be the future? Then I want to go to sleep right now and not wake up and watch any more wrestling anymore. It's terrible. It doesn't make sense. And while we do have a few minor good things that we just highlighted, the rest of it is still kind of bad. Where is Samoa Joe? We have the Intercontinental Championship on SmackDown Live. As far as I know, the United States Championship didn't get moved last night on Monday Night Raw. Is this going to be a post-shakeup update on WWE.com to fill in the gaps? All you guys did was move like six people from one show to another, and this is supposed to be a shakeup? Six fucking people is not a shakeup. Six people's just a trade. And not really a good trade. If I had to say pick a winner in this deal, definitely you got to go with SmackDown Live. They got an awesome championship in the Inter- Intercontinental Belt. They got Finn Balor and Buddy Murphy. They got Kyrie Sane and Ember Moon. Paige's team. Paige's team announcement was a big concern for me. But she came to SmackDown Live. I'm here. I'm Paige. And I have a tag team for you. And I was totally scared. If you guys watched last week, you know I was terrified at the possibility that this was going to be Nia Jax and Tamina coming over as a pair to SmackDown Live. And while that still was a possibility right up until she made her announcement, thankfully, by the grace of the wrestling gods, it didn't happen. You know what else didn't happen? You didn't get the Sky Pirates. Everybody that was all excited, the Sky Pirates are coming to SmackDown. No, they ain't. You did get 50% of the Sky Pirates as Kyrie Sane made her debut tonight on SmackDown Live as the tag team partner of Asuka. And this team was put together by Paige. And I don't understand why she would do this. What sense would it be to really have Paige? Oh, and she says, do brand new talents to brand new baby girls. And then she introduces Asuka. What's so fucking brand new about Asuka? Kyrie Sane, I'll give you. But Asuka's not fucking new. She's old news. Especially in the eyes of WWE management. I thought for the most part that the absolution thing would have made sense. But then the WWE swerved us and gave us this new tag team. And while it's not the Sky Pirates, Asuka and Kyrie Sane might be something that actually comes together and works. At least, at the very least, Asuka now has something to do. You know, she can occupy your time and actually actually go for some sort of a championship in the women's tag team division. Gives her something to do. Gives Asuka a direction. And it might work. As long as they don't Viking Express them. Viking Express. Viking Experience. Oh, God. Viking Express. Probably would have been better. Probably would have been better. But as long as they don't go out and name them like the Orient Express or the Asian Acrobats or the Pirate Experience, I don't think I'm really going to have a problem with it. Just let them be Kyrie Sane and Asuka. Don't call them Asuka Insane Asuka or, or any sort of a fucking bromance name or some shit like that. Just leave it be. Leave it be and it might work. 
It might work if they actually give a shit, which it doesn't look like they give a shit about the women's tag team division. How does it look like that when you've had your tag team champions who were just crowned at WrestleMania, whether or not it was a right decision is a whole nother topic for another video, but in two consecutive nights, your tag team champions were beaten clean by teams that don't exist. Copycat fucking copycat. Bleh, I'm sorry. Copy paste. Not copy Kate. Who the fuck is copy Kate? Maybe you have copy Kate in your office somewhere. Maybe she's the girl that works in the fucking copy machine. I don't know. <laughs> copy paste. Copy paste. Not copy Kate. Copy paste from last night's Monday Night Raw, you guys. What did we get? One singles match for the women. We got a six man tag. We got an eight woman tag. Almost literally the same format minus the third hour. It's like they're not even trying anymore. I don't think they ever were trying, but now they're not even pretending to try. I don't understand it. I do not understand it. Just as much as I don't understand all the creepy shit that's, that's showing up and we got two different creepy segments with two different puppets, which is what prompted me to bring out old Constable Corbin out of the graveyard for the opening of this show. And I'm starting to be very, very worried that Bray Wyatt is going to come back and be some kind of fucking ventriloquist wrestler. We do not need a Jeff Dunham in the WWE. Fighting with myself? Is Bray Wyatt going to show up and start wrestling these fucking dummies in the ring for a while? Well, that may be entertaining. It's definitely not what I want to see from a Bray Wyatt. Just like being part of the brand new day is not what I wanted to see from Kevin Owens tonight. And I am going to be patient with this. Because Rome wasn't built in a day and you can't start and end an angle in one episode. And what I'm, what I'm hoping for mostly is what probably many of you guys are hoping for as well. And that this is going to be the beginning of Kofi Kingston's first major program as the WWE champion. And his opponent will be Kevin Owens. Big E hurt himself last week doing them splits on SmackDown Live. He was injured during the match. It wasn't technically during the splits. But you got to believe that definitely led to him injuring himself later on that night. So the New Day decide we are going to replace Big E, or actually Kevin Owens decides that this is a good idea, that what they should do is replace Big E in the New Day with Big O. First he said Big K, and I'm thinking to myself, that's not going to fly. Big K, that, that's ridiculous. And I know there's going to be a temporary thing, but Big K is almost just as bad as the Viking experience. And then he says, no, we'll make it the Big O. And the Big O has wrestling lineage to it. The Big O was the name of Cowboy Bob Orton's father, who is also the grandfather of Randy Orton, who was also not seen on SmackDown Live or Monday Night Raw. <sighs> what the hell is I even just talking about? Like, oh, the Big O, right? <laughs> Kevin Owens. And while I did enjoy the gyrating and Kevin Owens and his personality, it's a testament to Kevin Owens and just how fucking good he is. Because I am I know for the most part, many of you guys probably enjoyed it a lot more than I did. It did definitely make me chuckle because Kevin Owens is a fucking funny guy. And seeing him dancing and gyrating around like a big E and trying to earn his way into the New Day was funny to watch. And in the back of my mind, all I could think of is this has got to be a way for Kevin Owens to turn heel and become maybe the first real contestant for Kofi Kingston to have to overcome as the WWE Champion. And while that did not happen by the end of the night, which is what some people were predicting, you have to have a little bit of patience here, because with something like this, and them using Kevin Owens to fill in this injury to Big E, it could develop over time. What's one of the things I tell you guys? What is missing in wrestling? Storytelling on a long-term scale. 
So I don't want them to start this up and wrap it up by the time we get to Money in the Bank in a couple of weeks. This is something that they can invest in. Kevin Owens can have some fun, show his personality, much like he did tonight. He stuffed his face full of fucking pancakes, went out there in the main event and, and tore it down with the New Day, and he's wearing the shirt and the unicorn horn, and he looks like a fucking jackass, and it's all going to make it even more special when he turns around and clocks Kofi Kingston and goes down this different path. If that does not happen, then everything that happened tonight was a fucking joke and a complete waste of time. So I have to hope that the plans are to do just that and turn Kevin Owens by the end of this thing and give Kofi Kingston something meaningful to do with a little bit of extra added incentive than just defending the WWE Championship because he will be wanting revenge for Kevin Owens, making a fool of him and turning on him and his friends in the New Day. So there is potential for this to turn into something greater than what we were presented tonight. It was mildly amusing at best, and it's all as a credit to Kevin Owens and the charisma of the New Day. And while I am not the biggest fan of the New Day comedy hour segments on SmackDown Live, as many of my longtime fans know, this was a fun way to start the show. It was different, and it is definitely going to lead us to something else. If it doesn't, then poor fucking Kevin Owens was made to look like a jackass tonight for absolutely no other reason than to let the casual wrestling fans chuckle. And I just want to give a little bit of a shout out to you guys in Montreal. Montreal is always known as being a hotbed for pro wrestling. The crowd showed up tonight. They were a much more livelier crowd tonight, I thought, than they were last night at Monday Night Raw. That's probably the fault of the shows and how they were put together. But Montreal giving it to Vince McMahon a little bit, showing a little bit of disapproval for the hyperbole and the overly dramatized and overly hyped announcement of Roman Reigns being part of SmackDown Live. My only wish is that when Vince came out tonight, aside from raining booze down upon him, a please retire chant should have broken out. I don't know what city is going to be the one to do it, but one of you cities out there, you need to get that chant started next time the boss struts his 70-year-old ass down to the ring. you got to start the please retire chant. You're not afraid to shout it at the big show. Shout it at this man. You missed an opportunity there. But (laughs) other than that, for the most part, the crowd tonight was pretty much on the ball. They were there to have a good time. We had some good wrestling on this show. Once again, in, in the last 48 hours, Finn Balor came out to show the world why he is a great guy. He had a great match, although he lost to Andrade Cien Almas, which was just a precursor to him no longer being on Monday Night Raw. Then he shows up tonight on Monday Night Raw and gets a big win. And defends his intercontinent, well, in a non-title matchup once again, against Ali. And this was a great match. This is one of the reasons why you want the Superstar shakeup Because this was something that you probably weren't even thinking about a few weeks ago. And they did not disappoint. This was a very good back and forth match. But Finn Balor wins with the coup de grace. The next match on the night was Charlotte Flair. Versus Carmella. This, like I said, was not as bad as I actually thought it was going to be. But Charlotte Flair wins, beats Carmella, the winner of the Women's Royal, the Women's Battle Royal at WrestleMania, which again is proven to mean absolutely fucking nothing because she shows up on SmackDown Live, her first match, first singles match after winning the Volva Trophy, the big uterus, the golden uterus of the WWE. And loses to Charlotte Flair, who's not even a champion anymore. She's just Charlotte Flair. So everybody get ready to taste that nature. That sounded awful. I shouldn't have said that. That's a terrible thing to say. Don't tell her I said that because I didn't mean it that way. But it's going to be shoved down your throats. Spoonful after spoonful with a nice side helping of Roman Reigns. And you guys know that's exactly what is coming our way. Becky Lynch comes out tonight. Becky Lynch has some sort of an announcement, some shake-up announcement, but she never gets to the announcement because that's when we see the arrival of Ember Moon telling her that she's here to take those belts from Becky Lynch by any means necessary. And then it just all kind of broke down into 
more WWE typical overbooked nonsense just to get as many bodies on the show as possible. Next thing you know, Bailey's coming out. Then you got the Iconics coming out. Then Paige comes out and makes her announcement. Then we get an eight-man tag. Eight-woman tag, as it were, where the Iconics, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, are going to take on Asuka, Kyrie, Sane, Ember Moon, and Bailey. And what do you think happened? I already told you what happened. If you were paying attention, you would know that the Iconics were pinned after Peyton Royce got nailed with the most beautiful elbow drop in all of wrestling, Kyrie Sane's insane elbow. And for the second night in a row, the champions were pinned in a match where they did not need to be pinned. They could have lost last night by a disqualification, count out, walk away from the match, do heel things. And tonight... The pin could have definitely went to either Sonya Deville or Mandy Rose. Why are we protecting Sonya Deville? Why was she not the one to eat the pinfall and you keep the champions looking strong? Disappointed by all of that. The next matchup on the night would be the last matchup, the six-man tag, which came immediately after the eight-man tag. Kofi Kingston, Big E, and Kevin Owens, the brand new day (laughs) versus Cesaro. Rusev, and Shinsuke Nakamura, which begs the question, where the fuck is Sheamus? Is Sheamus now on Monday Night Raw? Were there moves made after hours that we were unaware of? Is Sheamus just taking a vacation? Is the bar still a thing? Weren't they all just fighting with each other a couple of weeks ago? Why is Cesaro going to Rusev and Shinsuke? Are we really seeing... A League of Nations reformation? No, we're not seeing that. But that's what it feels like. That's definitely what it feels like. This thing ended exactly as you would expect it to as Kevin Owens and The New Day win this matchup. We come back from the break for that creepy vignette with the girl puppet. We already seen the zombie turkey from the Dark Crystal earlier in the evening, and I'm wondering just exactly where this is going. It has me intrigued, I will not lie. As annoying as it is with the laughing and the coughing and the, the jigsaw girlfriend puppet, it's it's got my interest peaked only because I need to see what it is. What is it this man is going to do? Is he coming out as a ventriloquist? Is he going to have a fucking howdy doody puppet next week? Does he want me to send him Constable Corbin so that he has all these different fucking things to choose from and we don't have to keep seeing the same vignette every fucking week? I don't know. Let me know, Bray. Hit me up, bro. I can help you out. (laughs) And then Vince McMahon comes out and ruins any sort of fun you may have been having on this evening. He announces Elias as the biggest acquisition in SmackDown Live history, only to have Elias be interrupted. We didn't just bring Elias and Roman Reigns to SmackDown Live. We brought the fucking segment from Raw to SmackDown Live. Elias goes out there, does his thing, Vince McMahon is in the ring with him, and then banner, banner, banner. The big dog is blue, and I don't care. But that could just be me. I know a lot of you guys might be coming down on me. You probably hit me up in the comments already, because you're all still, Oh, well, he had leukemia. He's recovering. He's a survivor. Get over it. Get over it. If the man can fucking wrestle, then he could take some fucking criticism. And I have no problem with the man behind the character. But I fucking hate that character. And the reason why my hate is so strong is because despite years of fan disapproval, despite years of him not truly being embraced by everybody in the fan base the way Vince McMahon wants him to be, he is still... Still considered by this man to be the future of the WWE. And he went right out there and fucking said it. Just because they brought Elias out before the actual announcement. Don't think that I think for one fuck a minute Vince McMahon thinks Elias is this groundbreaking acquisition. Everything he said in the ring about the acquisition is exactly how he truly feels. 
about Roman Reigns. And it's going to be a long and bumpy fucking road in 2019. I hate the WWE right now in 2019. The state of pro wrestling is all over the place, as many of you guys know. Thank goodness we all get to convene here at the conclusion of each and every show to bring the hammer down on all of their nonsense. And I want to thank you guys for being here with me once again. That is your SmackDown Live Superstar Shake-Up review. This show and this whole week in the Superstar Shake-Up couldn't have been any more disappointing than it was. I don't think they could have done a worse job. I'm not happy with the format that they chose to display this thing with. We didn't have any clear-cut announcements. We just had to go by, oh, we have surprise people coming out, and then the announce team stumbling all over themselves to try to tell us clear and clear as day, oh, this guy is, he is here on SmackDown. He has moved from Raw. He is here. I liked it much better when you had a GM on each show. That's when something like this matters. It wasn't a draft, but at the very least, you could have made it interesting. There could have been strategic maneuvers made. Somebody that Stephanie McMahon actually wants. Somebody that Vi- that Vince wants on SmackDown. Instead, like, make us see the behind the scenes. You know what I mean? Make us see the backroom deals. Show superstars not being happy to be drafted or sent over to the other show. Show something. Don't just throw everything at us like you vomited on a plate and then give me a fucking spoon and say, here, eat this. Because that's not how it works. Definitely not for me. Thank you guys once again for being here. This channel is awesome. You guys are awesome. And if you are not one of the almost 1,350 sledgeheads that already populate this channel that I invite you guys to hit that subscribe button right now. You know you had a good time on this show tonight. I've been bringing a fire this week since we got the whole new setup and we got all the bells and whistles now and we are running on full steam and this train is headed right to the top of YouTube and I want you guys to jump in the caboose or whatever train car. I don't have to be on my caboose and take this ride with me. I want to thank all of you that jumped aboard so far and invite the rest of you to do so right now. Now, hit that subscribe button and make sure you mash that like button to let me know that you enjoyed today's show and let the whole world see that there's a whole lot of us that enjoy actual good entertainment, some good old-fashioned fun, criticism, and sarcasm, and good humor after being subjected to some pretty bad wrestling. And if that's what you're looking for and you need a place to vent your frustrations, this is the place for you. Vent those frustrations down in the comment section down below. I love hearing from each and every single one of you, and I look forward to it at the conclusion of every single review. My favorite thing to do is sit here and watch those comments pop up until my eyes pop themselves closed because my life is just fucking exhausting, just as it is many of you you guys. And don't forget to share this video with each and every one of your wrestling buddies all over the wrestling world, especially if they weren't too happy with the 2019 Superstar Shake-Up. They may need somewhere to vent, and now you know where to send them. To the greatest wrestling channel on YouTube, we're little, but we are hard, man. What is with all my little fucking sexy puns, man? I didn't mean it that. We are running to the top And I want to thank you guys once again for being here with me. My name is Nick Nightmare. This is the team, Thor the Sledgehammer, the official Sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, and his tag team partner, the World Heavyweight Champion of all the microphones in all the world, Mr. Blue the Snowball Microphone, the most important member of the team, as always, is each and every one of you bastards. I can't be doing any of this without you. I love each and every one of you so much, and thank you for being a part of of this channel with me that my friends is going to do it and we are out of here and we will see you next time right here on your new favorite wrestling show the sledgehammer wrestling show only on sledgehammer tv right here on youtube.com boom